Hey, what is going on, everyone? This is Tam Pham from BotAcademy.com. And today we have Richard, one of our Bot Academy students, with us to teach us something very special. Richard, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on and teaching us about um, how to send calendar reminders through Messenger. Um, can you kind of explain the problem that one of our students were facing and how you, and then we can dive into the solution of how you solved it? Yeah, sure. So the problem was how to use the, the messenger application to send reminders on an upcoming appointment or a calendar or something that somebody had signed up for. Yeah. Uh, and it was something that I had thought about a lot too, because you know, we get the, the messengers for the, the webinars and that stuff. How do you translate that from the webinar into something that's a little bit more dynamic, like a calendar where you have changing times and you can't just do a standard broadcast and a tag that, that sends out automated. So something that interacts a little bit more dynamically with how people you know, operate in day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Uh, and so I've figured out a workaround. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a little ugly still, but uh, so far it's working pretty well. So I'll show awesome. you guys the back end of how I'm doing it. I'm curious, what softwares can this work with? Like Calendly, Acuity Scheduling, any of those? So right now I'm doing it with Acuity Scheduling. Mm -hmm. uh, it's through Zapier though. So the only thing you need is you need uh, a Zap to be able to fire a certain time before a calendar. Mm -hmm. And for you to be able to pull the calendar information of the appointment into a Zap and then push it into ManyChat. So it can mm -hmm. work for Google Calendar, Calendarly, Acuity scheduling, anything that's native into Zapier, you can translate that over into the same format. Wow, I am pumped. Yeah, go ahead and share your screen. And I'm going to just tell everyone, like, I have not seen this yet. So this is all very new to me. And I want to check it out and see how we can use this for Bot Academy for ourselves. Okay, so. And how everyone else can, watching this, can use this for your business or for your coaching practice or for your consulting um, and so on. Okay, so do you have my screen up? Yes, I see it. Okay, so I will show you the acuity side. Uh, the basic of what it started out with was I did a acuity scheduling link right from within Messenger. Uh, you click a button, it pushes to acuity scheduling, pulls up the web interface for acuity, and somebody books an appointment, which was mm -hmm. a, a great way to start off with the Messenger. Uh, then this is this basic flow here. And golden rule of real-time tech, never do it live. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Let's see if this will load up. Okay, so basic flow. Uh, trigger is a new appointment with an mm. acuity scheduling. Appointment type, phone call. Uh, I have a pipe drive to create, find a deal and create an activity. So I get pipe drive notifications when something happens within my calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, Acuity does not automatically update you uh, when something comes in. You have to pay attention to the calendar within Acuity. So I sent up an outbound email from Zapier that pushes all of the basic information on that appointment. So name, appointment confirmation comes right to my email. So when somebody makes that, I have notification. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have one set up for changes, uh, but at least I know something's going on. And typically I've never had anybody pull in an appointment. They usually push it out. Mm -hmm. uh, so I haven't got caught in that, that yet. Uh, and this last piece is what I created to add in the Manny chat reminder. Got it. And just so, before you continue, um, yep. just to give people context, so Acuity Scheduling is a software where you can um, schedule um, calls by sending them the, your Acuity Scheduling link. Pipedrive, for those who are not familiar, is a sales CRM where you can have like little columns where you can move cards from one column to another column to make sure that you're closing the sale. Um, it sounds like the outbound email is just a simple email to your email address to update you on the acu acu um, acuity scheduling. And then the last part is the Google Sheets where you, it sounds like you use that for ManyChat or to integrate with ManyChat. Is that correct? Exactly. So, uh, okay. Just to give people some context of like, if they're not familiar with all these different softwares yet. Yes, uh, uh, exactly. So then the Google Sheets uh, is this right here. Uh, four fields, first name, last name, email, and messenger ID. 
Okay. Uh, so if you watch the video with Dan on ManyChat, he was talking about how to pull people's emails and use that as a dynamic tag to find somebody within ManyChat. My mm -hmm. problem was I'm trying to do it cold from ManyChat. So I have no information about this person. I want a cold lead that comes in and be able to find them between those two software. You can't do it within the same Zap. You have to have some form of a translation between the two. Okay. Uh, one I chose was their last name. Uh, my theory was first name, people go by nicknames. Some people use different names to test CRMs and whether you're automated or not. Most people, if you put your last name in, they're not going to change that. ManyChat mm -hmm. pulls people's last names as it's put into Facebook. Uh, not ironclad, but pretty close. Uh, you'll see the one caveat is actually one that I fall under. Uh, my last name is Schnitzel. My Facebook tag is Schnitzel Jr. Uh, so they mm -hmm. don't match up. Uh, easy fix. So you get an error code from Zapier. You go back in. You make sure the last names match. You rerun the Zap and everything links up. Got it. So the first name, last name, and email come from this initial Zap. Mm -hmm. Goes to my Google Sheets. You name the sheet, uh, the spreadsheet, the worksheet, which is the tab within it, mm -hmm. uh, the lookup column, which is your top row here. And then you look up a variable and you tell Zapier if you don't find the variable to fill in the information that's missing. In my case, first name, last name, and email within each column that's available. Mm -hmm. Messenger ID right now is left blank. Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, we need to go over to Acuity. So Acuity fires off an email to somebody. And if you go under email settings. So with different calendar software, this is going to look different, but this is right. for the email confirmation when you get after someone schedules an appointment. Right. So what this is here is a URL reference from ManyChat. Whoa. And it's just a button that I added in. It's a URL reference. Can you click you edit on that link so people can see what the ref URL is? Well, I kind of see an example. Yep. There it is. Oh. That's a ref Many URL chat. within ManyChat. Got yes. it. That ref URL fires this sequence. Click mm. yes below to get a reminder about your messenger. The button when you click yes fires ah. off a tag. Okay, that okay. tag goes to the next zap, which is going to fill in that messenger ID, that ID. fourth column that was missing. Mm, yes. I was like, how'd you get the messenger ID? The, yes. Because of that tag. It, yes. Mm. So very cool. Tag user, right? Acuity reminder. You have to look up the row, which in my case, I'm taking the last name of the person, which you pull from any chat, mm -hmm. looks up that column. If it exists, it goes to the next step. If it doesn't, I get an email telling me that a zap failed and I can go in and see if there's a mismatch in last names and correct it and then rerun the zap. But then it updates your spreadsheet row. So row two is what step two is pulling, that row reference. Mm -hmm. And then I'm filling in that row, column messenger ID with the ManyChat user ID. So mm -hmm. now I have a complete Excel spreadsheet and I can correlate between the two. And once this is done, you can actually correlate with anything else that you want to set up. As long as you have the messenger ID for the person, their last name and their email, your options from here on are limitless, wherever you want to pull it through. Wow. This is pretty awesome. So two zaps, one that, re I feel like you don't, like for people listen, watching this, they don't really need a pipe drive um, no. like software. No. That's just part of your flow that you have in your thing. Exactly. Pipe drive is an added step for my personal flow. Yes, got it. Um, this might sound like a very naive question, but mm -hmm. if someone were to book your calendar and they have the same two last names? It would fail. It would fail. Mm -hmm. Right now it would fail because it's looking only for one last name. Got it. And I think it's so this is like just for the beginning stages where like you don't have thousands of subscribers, right? right? And then, right. Yeah, yeah, makes total yeah. sense. At the moment, uh, I could get a little bit more sophisticated with my lookup. 
Mm -hmm. trying to go beyond last name and add a, a second layer of search parameters. Uh, but for the right now, it's not needed. Uh, and mm -hmm. hopefully, ManyChat and Zapier add a few other tweaks as the platform develops that makes this whole sequence a little bit easier. Because right now, we're at three multi-step zaps. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll send him this video. Cool yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll send him this video and tell him that your use case and what you're doing to work around it. Okay. And then, so the last piece is uh, meeting, no, send meeting reminder message. So, so, the, so the first zap was all about sending from Acuity to your email about all the information about the person who booked it. The yep. second part, second zap was about filling in that messenger ID that was missing in the first zap. Correct. And now this is the third zap. What is this zap about? This is the zap that's actually going to send somebody a message a specified time before a meeting. Mm. I have mine set up to fire an hour before an acuity scheduling meeting happens. Mm, so it's just a time before hours on anything in my calendar. When this fires, it looks up the spreadsheet column based off that last name. Mm. So I pull in all the data. Now, in theory, you should be able to <laughs> jump to step four, which is just send somebody a custom value or send somebody a user content. When I tested it, the ManyChat would fail. I don't know if it was something on Zapier side or ManyChat side, uh, but I figured out an additional step that you add in that gets rid of that. What I did is I set a custom field within ManyChat called meeting update. Input the information that I want to send that person and then I send content to user and instead of inputting content and the different variables, so it, it didn't like, um, not coming up. So it didn't like when I pulled in acuity scheduling variable, sending mm. many chat native content mm. into, into many chat. So I, I set up this con, uh, Variable meeting content and within ManyChat, just push that out to the person an hour before. Got it. And then that's, that's sending reminders. And then from there, you can build upon it. You can do, you know, 24 hours before you can change the meeting update. Uh, so if you wanted to pull in additional information from your CRM or anything like that, you add an additional step, you search that person's last name again and then when you are setting up this custom field anything in a previous zap is available for information mm -hmm. so you just add it in whatever you want it to be very very cool that's how i'm doing it that's amazing how how, how did you feel when it finally worked <laughs> ecstatic <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just to give everyone context watching, like Rich is one of the most hardworking pre um, people, students in our uh, Vod Academy course. And I'm very glad you can clearly see like your drive of how extensive you would want something to work and you make it happen. This is awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Awesome. Is there, before we end, is there anything else that might trip somebody up while setting this up and, uh, or might, you know, some possible op like common obstacles that you might have faced in the beginning and, um, that you got over that someone should be aware of? Uh, the, so the, I think the two biggest I ran into were the uh, custom field and the send content not firing correctly. And then having to implement the Excel spreadsheet to talk between the two people, the two zaps. Uh, I couldn't figure out how to link them into one sequence mm. uh, be able to pull the, the forward information. The Excel spreadsheet so far has worked to alleviate that because then I just pull from that spreadsheet. It's common across anything that I want to come across. Uh, and that ManyChat user ID is uh, unique to those individual people. Uh, mm. The worst I'm going to have so far is I may have to do some manual entry when things fire. <laughs> awesome. Well, we will, imp we will make another video when this process improves, but this is a really <laughs> awesome workaround. Um, I freaking love this. And you're going to save everyone so much time. So if you enjoyed this video, just leave a comment for Richard. And you can stop sharing your screen now, Richard. Um, okay. And I'm very curious if you can share 
um, your website or how people can find you? Because I know you've been working a lot with your own clients and you've been working really freaking hard. Like I really admire the, the amount of um, effort you put into outreach and to, into your work. Yeah, so uh, the company is BTAC Publications, uh, website btacpublications.com. Uh, come check me out. Uh, if you're interested, BTAC stands for bow ties are cool. Uh, <laughs> really? So, yeah. Uh, wear a bunch of bow ties. Fiance and myself are both Dr. Who fans. So <laughs> trying to put a little bit of personality and uh, levity into the business. So Awesome. Well, Richard, this has been fantastic. I hope people reach out to you and have a bow tie on when they Skype with you and <laughs> schedule an appointment with you. Awesome. 10% <laughs> if you do. 10% off. Okay. That sounds good. <laughs> you heard it here. 10% off if you wear a bow tie. <laughs> awesome. And is there anything, any last words, Richard, you want to um, end it off with? Uh, just thanks for setting this up. It was a pleasure to show what I've built. Uh, glad to share the time and the effort and hopefully help everybody else out uh, get there a little bit quicker. So thank awesome. you. Awesome. You, you're going to save people so much time with this and people are going to love you for this. So thank you, Richard. <laughs> Uh, and everyone else watching, um, feel free to like this video, of course. Leave a comment for Richard saying, yes, like, thank you so much. Um, and subscribe to our channel for more um, awesome uh, and useful uh, chatbot content. All right. Thanks, everyone.